Anyone want to start? Back to hell with you! How long are we going to play games, Louis? Now that you've shot two seasons of Interview with the Vampire, what are your reflections on Lestat and Louis' relationship? Is it love or is it just the vampire bond gone awry? Love, right? Mm. It's like the deepest, most upsetting kind of love that you could possibly experience, which the mm. vampire bond is tied into that, right? I yeah. Guess. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's the vampire bond between Lestat and Claudia as well in terms of maker and fledgling or whatever, you know, you want to use. But uh, yeah, I think Louis and Lestat are, it's, dark <laughs> it's bleak it's painful <laughs> you can only love someone in that capacity when you can destroy some like in that capacity so the the love for each other that they have is cyclical you can't love someone or something that you could never hate like you could never have the capacity to hate and then you can't hate someone unless you love them enough to care enough to hate yeah Delaney, you've taken over the role of <laughs> Claudia for season two. I don't want to know first day on set. What was it like? And did Jacob or anybody give you any advice or were there any pranks? What was it like? The first day on set was probably the best day ever for me. And I'll never forget my first day. It was, I was doing a lot. I was doing a lot. I had Jacob with me and I had my lenses for the first time as well. So I was adjusting to that. And Jacob was like, you'll see sometimes and sometimes you won't see but yeah my first day was the greatest day ever probably filming because it was like the initiation you know into the role and I was like now I'm really Claudia had my hair had my lenses had my costume everything was kind of like coming together for me we had these like amazing coats that were heavy but covered in fur and yeah I, I took so many pictures that day <laughs> and Jacob gave me what the chronicles of Anne Rice oh, like, yeah, as a the, gift the like as a, yeah yeah and um, yeah, my first day was amazing. So do all three of you now have like a book club where you go over all of the books and where you are and where your characters are? Yeah, yeah, we do. We meet we, Wednesdays. We, we, yeah, Wednesdays, some depend, like the ladies, you know, not always. Yeah. Uh, we talk about um, tab. <laughs> we talk about Tad Polo and we talk about uh, the vampire Vittorio. Vittorio. Yeah, the yeah. vampire Vittorio and Vittorio. Santino. Yeah. And uh, Santino and the gang. Yeah. Sam, Lestat at the end of season one is clearly not dead, but mm. he's not quite alive either. Mm. Can you share a little bit about his role this season and where his mind's at? He is a, um, a vision or a kind of hallucination or a dream that Louis's having. I don't know where his mind is at when it's like that, because he's sort of more Louis than he is anything else. And it's sort of like an echo of, of parts of their relationship that maybe Louis doesn't want to necessarily talk about or remember in his interview with um, Malloy. Uh, and then he does re-enter, as you've seen, the story. Um, but uh, how he does that, you know, we have to wait and see. <laughs> Involves dimensional portals. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, like, obviously, you know he's not dead because he's, you know, uh, as Malloy pointed out, he's probably surviving off rat dinner. And, um, and <laughs> rat dinner. Rat dinner. <laughs> his least favourite kind of dinner. Ratatouille. Yeah, ratatouille. <laughs> ratatouille. He got a fresh rat out of the dump. But, you know, like, these are very, very powerful monsters. So... You know, it takes quite a lot to kill them. Claudia is the most powerful, I think. You know, it's got a lot of fun. It's got a lot of strength. Yeah, and mental strength as well. A lot They're of not as arrested. I think she's she very underestimated by the vampires. You know. Let's talk about Louis and Claudia in Paris for a little bit, because it's interesting. It's where Lestat became a vampire. That was clear from the trailers. But the two of you have carved out a different life than you had in New Orleans. Can you talk about that a little bit? The thing for me that I find really interesting about the, at least the first two episodes with Louis and Claudia, before they kind of separate a little bit, is that there's something inherently like outsider-ish about a vampire that you feel like they feel and are outsiders. They're kind of in the shadows. And the whole point of this trip, at least for Claudia, is to like find some belonging, find like a community, like a vampire community. And actually they end up more like Sorry. outsiders and they're kind of actually, they've stepped into a really hostile territory. It's really tragic. <laughs> and also I think that the big, for me at least, the big tragedy of the season is that they lose each other. That actually they, they could have been each other's community 
there wasn't so much bad blood. They could have taken care of each other better. Mm-hmm. Louis really f***ed up with Claudia a lot this season. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about some of that community that they try to find because another central part of season two is the Théâtre des Vampires. And we know from the trailer that Lestat has a connection to it. So, Sam, first, can you explain that connection? And then, uh, Jacob and Delaney, can you talk about how it relates to each of your characters, that concept of found family? It's a big part of who he is, and it's uh, a kind of a twisty, turny series of events that connects Lestat and Armand through this space. But Lestat has always been outside of the rules of regular vampire law. He doesn't really want to conform. So, you know, he says it to Claudia um, in season one. He says the vampires out there are vicious. The vampires in Europe are much, much worse. Depends on how you remember a certain thing, when it might have also just been an actually honest warning that you want to go to Europe, you want to find a vampire community. There is no vampire community. The vampires are, they don't know who they are. They're obsessed with kind of like, you know, identifying as this sort of like, we are evil, we hate ourselves, we're going to kind of, you know, worship God through our kind of commitment to Satan. It's very anti-Lestat kind of sentiments. So that's all about like, you know, celebrate yourself for what we are, we're beautiful creatures, we're at, you know, like, don't fall into the trap of hating hating who you are, which is a big part of the dynamic between Louis and Lestat, because there's a lot of conflict there, because there's a lot of shame when you you are this kind of, like, ruthless killer, and you feel incredibly guilty because you have to kill people to survive. Lestat, it's not his MO. He's not going to be made to feel guilty for the thing that he didn't choose. He's going to make the most of it. Embrace it. <laughs> you know? Embrace so, it. Lassar is always about building his own community. I don't know if he built a very good community with Louis and Claudia because he, you know, he's he's a really complex and difficult character and he needed to learn some lessons that he can't make them, force them to be a part of the community that he wants them to be a part of. Like they needed to kind of listen to each other more. He needed to learn more. He needed a lot. He needed to be killed, basically, to kind of get a grip. That's just pretty much what I'm going to say about the vampire, the theater of the vampires. It's it's something that Lassar did start. It just... It's obviously something that he ended up leaving for a reason. So Jacob and Delaney, how does the theater affect the two of you? And why didn't your characters really heed Lestat's warning? Well, I think for Claudia, it's Lestat telling her that, so she's not going to listen anyway. Um, But with the theater, um, uh, Claudia has no idea what she's walking into. She thinks in the beginning, again, it's it's all in her mind. She's created this kind of vision that she thinks Paris is. She's going head head on into it, and but she has no idea what she's walking into. And I think her circumstance plays a big part in why this kind of thing happens to her. It's always said that when people are turned to vampires young, they don't live very long. She thinks it's what she wants, and it's essentially not... Louis just doesn't like theatre kids. He's not into it. He's like, no, nah, you lot are extroverts. I think I think he's not <laughs> he's just not keen on on the kind of extroversion of, of the theatre and the vampire. He's, he finds it all a bit crass. Louis's not somebody who's gonna celebrate the theatrical killing of humans, the theatrical ritualistic killing of human beings. It's not his vibe. <laughs> but he does seem to be uh, open up to his artistic side a little bit in Paris. Yeah, he loves art. You know, he loves human art. But I, I just think that he doesn't see and he sees it as like a sideshow. Like he wants to, I think when he gets to Paris, he's like, I want to feel Paris. Like I want to understand Paris as it is like in a human context. Like I think Claudia, the theatre is Claudia's thing. And it was Lestat's thing as well. You got drags. There's a line in the show where he's like, I've, I've been to the theatre too much in my life. Like Lestat used to take him there. And there's so many by the associations as well with going to the opera and having to pretend to be a ballet. And even though he's he's like, he's a rich man, and <laughs> he, he always was. I think he likes the idea of being like on the streets, like finding out like what are the, the kind of underground movements, like what are the, yeah. And ultimately, I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of giving away his whole arc, I guess, but he's like, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I'm good at like, operating in lots of different environments and fitting in and using it to my advantage. And also his life in New Orleans as a black man is very different than his life in New- in Paris. 
Yeah. And I, it feels like he's celebrating that a little bit. Louis does find a community. It's just that it's, it's a, a human community, which is kind of predictable. You could have, like, you could have known that that's what Louis' journey was going to be. You don't really see it in the show, but you see certainly like the effect it was having. Jacob, when Louis introduced Daniel Bonloy, uh to Armand as the love of his life, why does he call Armand that? And how does that love differ from his love for Lestat? So I think it's completely different. I think like Louis and Armand's relationship is quite circumstantial, like when you, when it first started. And I think he, like Louis is just looking for something different. I think he just wants to like have a different kind of energy and, and have a different dynamic and be, uh, I don't know, if maybe feel a little bit more in charge. Even though I think that Louis is more in charge in the relationship with Lestat than he'd ever admit to. <laughs> like he, he controls he controls the weather in his own way. Last question, and this is for all three of you. There's so many fans of this show that are so excited to see it come back. If you had a message for them, what would it be? Thanks for watching. <laughs> I would also say, I'd say that like fans of the show and fans of the books, like even if you know what's coming in the second part of, of this story, um, like be prepared to have your heart broken, even if you know what's coming. Be prepared for um for a lot of feelings and complications. This is a um even messier season than season one in terms of people's behavior and actions. Yeah, it's yeah. a messy season. There's no right or wrong really at the end of the day, and they they're all kind of deeply flawed characters and that's why they're interesting mm. um so yeah be prepared to um have complicated feelings by everybody have very complicated feelings yeah <laughs>